hello guys hello good evening you are welcome to my youtube channel my name is kate alexi how are you guys doing out there hope you guys are doing so good i can see i know my instincts tells me that you guys are doing good first of all i just want to say thank you for subscribing to my youtube channel for sharing my video for your comment for your like for viewing i really appreciate thank you guys thank you don't know what this means to me thank you so much i appreciate so last time i talked about infertility in the marriage i also talked about what couples are supposed to do in order to come together to achieve a common goal what is the goal in the marriage? To have a child. So, today I am going to be sharing some of the effect of infertility in the marriage. So, when couples are going through infertility problem, there are a lot of things that happen to that marriage. Just like they say, marriage is not a bed of roses. No. So marriages you see out there, you think they are happy with, when they don't have children. No, most of those marriages, they are not happy. No, the marriage is not going well at all. They say all that glitters is not good. When you see couples who are married and you see them working together on the road, you think they are fine. They are not fine. They are going through emotional trauma. They are going through emotional stress. They are going through mental health in their home, among them. The couple, are, if you go to a couple who are struggling to have a child, they are not happy. If you go to their house, go and stay with them for a day. They hardly talk to each other. They are not happy. It's not that maybe they are really fighting each other. They are fighting themselves. Either the man is a fault or the woman is a fault, that person is going to be fighting him or herself within. So you see, the person will be going through mental stress. All the time, you see that couple, either one of them, you see that person always grumpy, always restraining him or herself from every activity being carried out in the home. So couple, they go through emotional trauma, emotional stress in the home, in that marriage. The marriage is already shaking because they are not going to be having uh, a, a, a good communication. Communication is going to be reduced. Why going through that emotional trauma? Because they are always thinking of, oh, I have not gotten a child. Oh, when would I have a child? If the person is having a problem, the woman is having a problem, or the man is having a problem, him or he, he him or she is going to be blaming themselves. They're going to be like, oh, why am I having this problem? Why can't I conceive? So you see that there is going to be hard for them to come together and communicate, except it takes like couple who are really in love. Couple who are in love, they are not really putting too more effort of having children, they kind of like, oh, we didn't get married because of children. We got married because we love each other. They try to communicate. But when this is not happening in that marriage, communication is going to be reduced. They're going to be, uh, 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 you know, uh, you know, reduction in communication. The communication is going to be decreased because it's like there's no way. It's going to be reduced. There's no way they can communicate when they are not happy. Even if they are going to communicate, it's always going to be about when are we going to have a child? When are we going to seek help? When are we going to see a doctor? So if one of them say, oh, I don't know, especially the one that does not have a problem, we say, I don't know, I'm fine you can go and look for a doctor or you can go on your own to seek a solution. Me, I don't have a problem. You see that the communication aspect is going to be very, very 
um you know it's not gonna be it's not gonna oh go away it's not gonna go where because one is already blaming the other one so it's going to be the uh, aspect of communication is going to be reduced yes another thing is argument there is always going to be argument in that marriage when arguments start occurring in the marriage that marriage is carried down it's it, it's carried down not going anywhere it's going to be stuck in one place because they are going to be arguing it's just like um how do i say you have a a friend that you are always arguing with every time you guys are always quarreling there's bound to be a separation between those friends you're gonna be like oh this is my friend is always giving me problem we are always quarreling that's why you see you see the friends they're gonna be going on their separate way so when argument occur in the marriage all the time because of a child <laughs> you know what that means it can lead to fight and while they're arguing they start blaming each other they start blaming each other for uh being responsible for not being able to conceive or they start blaming each other of oh maybe you have done something in the past that is affecting you um not being able to conceive so the couple are going to be arguing all the time and that can reduce the love and affection in the marriage argument they argue over little things and most of the things they are going to be arguing on it's not going to be so there might not even be a child issue that they are arguing on maybe just a little thing just minor thing that happened the other party will just turn it to oh i don't have a child oh well, it's because there is no children if you if there was a child in the in, in, you know in the circle all these things wouldn't have happened so argument is bound to happen all the time frequently in that marriage that's another effect of uh, infertility it can bring argument couple argue all the time then another thing that's going to also affect is going to be um like um a uh, sexual stress yes um the sexual stress is going to come up in the marriage yes people don't know this where couple are going through infertility hmm. they're not going to have sex if you go to the doctor the doctor is going to say oh um what how how long do you have sex how often do you have sex in a week that way you hear some couples say huh for we don't we don't even have sex for like a month so we say mm, we have sex only once or twice in a month and doctor is going to be like what you have sex twice in a month then how are you expecting to get pregnant so that is another issue uh sexual stress can be so uh like draining in the marriage because you're not going to be in you know uh interested in having sex with your partner that is the truth especially um uh if you are the one always having the blame according to how they put it if you are the let, let's say for example i don't going to use only one sex uh or one gender i'm going to be using both two uh, two gender for example a man has a low spare count and the woman is fertile it's only the man that is having a problem so when the man want to have sex with the woman sometimes the woman is gonna like oh what's the need of having sex when with it's not gonna yield uh to any progress it's not gonna use fruit so why are we gonna have sex that argument comes in and they don't want to have sex again maybe the guy really want to have it but the woman is say i'm not ready because i'm just going to waste my body waste my eggs waste my ovulation and all of that the evil is the woman that is you know that is the the one having the problem the woman is going to be like okay i know when a woman has a problem 
she she really really wants to have sex even when doctor pronounce her um barren or infertile the woman still have faith women are most women like i can say most women are very very um believing and having that faith they have strong faith that they will have a child no matter what even they say their tubes are blocked their wombs have been removed they still have that faith that they will have a child so when the woman initiate that uh sex aspect the man will not want to do the man will be like why all those one that i'll be pouring in did he use any fruit what 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 are we going to be having sex for are we just having fun and maybe the woman say it might happen we, we say what what will it happen it has not happened since we got married so it will never happen so that will now reduce the stress i uh, sorry it will now reduce that uh, sex sex aspect it will reduce the urge of the couple having sex so even if they want to have it and they agree to have sex they're not going to communion like as they they were when they newly got married they're going to be like maybe the, the, the whoever i don't know i don't want to say whoever is having a problem is going to be like oh god please why the other one is just frowning his or her face and say mm, even this thing we are doing sometimes it can also be both couple both couple can be doing it and they can just both of them can be so grumpy during sex and like oh Ah, they don't enjoy that is just overall thing they don't enjoy sex couple will not enjoy sex so when there is no sex happening in the marriage though that matter what do you think will happen the marriage is bound to collapse so that is how i see i'm just giving my own opinion and uh, you guys might see it uh, in the other way so this is just my opinion of it that um it can cause stress you know in the in the sex aspect couple don't want to have sex so time it can be all the other way around so time they might it might be they might be having too much sex because they want to have it they can just say okay we're not going to wait for ovulation we're going to be doing it anyhow we're going to be doing it every day and somebody like doing it the every day will be tired you will just be tired and be feeling reluctant of doing uh, having sex all the time so that is another thing so i feel um uh, it can lead to like uh, sexual stress another thing is fear oh fear of the unknown what is coming into this marriage what is going to happen to this marriage especially if you are the one in the picture when I mean you are the one in the picture, if you are the one having the problem, you are the one carrying that body of not able to conceive, your fear is going to be like, my partner is going to leave me. What will happen if I can't conceive from now till maybe two years now, three years time, what will happen? Will my partner leave me? You had that fear. The fear will keep occurring to you you can't even sleep at night you'll be thinking of am i gonna lose my marriage then you start doing research on what happened to couple who were not able to conceive were they able to live ev uh, happily ever after that's the question you're going to be asking yourself even as you are doing all this thing it's it's stressing you mentally it's stressing you you are you are having stress. You are going through emotional trauma. You are going crazy. You are going not over this thing. People, some people may not understand this what I'm talking about because they have not been through the uh, infertility problem. They, they are not there. They have never been there. They won't understand. The only people that will understand will be the people who have been through infertility problem. So if you have been through infertility problem, you know what I'm talking about. Those who have not been through, who are not there yet, I know some are going to be there. I pray that God should not let any woman or any man go through infertility. Whoever is going through infertility now, I just pray that God should answer their prayers. It's not something we wish for our enemy to happen. It's really, really 
stressing it's stressing it's stressful very stressful experience it's not nothing something you want to experience infertility no so um fear that your partner will leave you that is another thing if a woman is having problem you think that your husband is going to leave you if the husband is having problem you think your wife is going to leave you so that is the thing so when you start having that fear that commitment will not be there anymore. You are kind of like restraining yourself from uh, doing so many things. Maybe you and your, your spouse, you'll be having a, an account together. You try to try to like withdraw yourself. Maybe you guys are building your life together. There are things that is connect, you guys are connected with. You start, one of you start, you know, disassociating yourself from that um that uh, you know that rope that tie both of you like let me just go straight for example you have a you your you couple have a joint account you saving money into one account and you notice that you are having that fear and you have been noticing maybe your partner is going the other way and you feel like oh he might leave me she might leave me tomorrow and you begin to consider, consider having your own account. Then, or maybe you guys are building a house together. You begin to withdraw yourself from me and say, No, I feel my partner might leave me tomorrow and leave me empty handed. Or you think you guys have invested the money in something together and you try to see how you can collect your own share. Or you might not actually do this thing. You might be nursing in your mind, you might be having it cultivated that thing, that feeling in your mind that this is what you're supposed to do. And you start regretting why you have even contributed everything together with that person at the at the uh, at the beginning when you know all these things started. So that's the another thing. Fear the couples are gonna be afraid, afraid of losing each other so you know what that um what that is to the marriage another thing the main important one <laughs> that affect that we have fed this marriage of a thing through infertility is finance hmm. financial strain financial struggle financial problem hmm. you're gonna spend money when couples start spending money or doing ultrasound, thank God in this part of the world that we are, like in Canada here, doing an ultrasound is free. But if you are going through infertility treatment, me let me tell you, ultrasound is not free. It's five hundred dollars. You're gonna pay it. You're gonna pay because. They are going to do a special ultrasound for you to monitor your follicles so they are, you are going to pay for it government are not going to pay that for you i know in the end you might collect some part of it in your tax during tax so you're going to pay for that and um you're going to pay for other like other blood works you're going to buy medication while you are going through infertility and another thing, you're going to be buying um, lots of stuff. Like, maybe you are the one that use any health product on your skin. Doctor is going to tell you, um, you know, that when you are trying to conceive, don't use so, so so lotion on your skin. Don't use so so so, so body wash or whatever. Or don't use um, so so... stuff on your skin so they will recommend special one for you it might be very easy so so divorce where couple are going through infertility there's going to be a divorce a majority of people who are not able who, who are not able to conceive they end up divorcing <coughs> they end up divorcing and mo most of the time is the person that feel he or she is not having problem that always bring that divorce matter we just say mm -mm. 
I'm done. Let divorce. Let everybody go their separate way. So um, I'm still advising people <laughs> because um, you know they said um, I don't know this uh, idiomatic idiomatic expression or is it proverb a proverb that that says um, mm, are they? They say he who wears the shoes know where his pitches him. So you that have not been there, you will not know what I'm talking about. People who have been there knows what I'm talking about. Divorcing because of not able to have a child is very, very stressful. And it can be so emotional damage. Yes, it's emotional damage. It can cost you, it cost you a lot of emotional damage and emotional trauma. You're going to be thinking like you've been neglected, especially if you are the one having the problem. You feel like your whole world has collapsed on you. Like you are not human anymore. You are, sweetie. You are human. If you are going through infertility and your partner is not ready so, to support you, it's okay. Don't kill yourself over it. Don't stress yourself over it. I know what I'm talking about. Women who are going through infertility, they are having emotional trauma. They are going through mental health. It's real. Mental health is real. It's affecting a lot of people, especially women. Especially women who are, who are going through infertility. They are having it. They are having it. They are having something very strong in their mind, in their body, soul. They are going through lot of problems in their heart is how broken please if you are a woman or a man you are going through infertility please go see a doctor if you have seen a doctor and there is nothing they can do hope on god pray to god it's going to help you if you can't conceive it's nothing you can kill yourself about i know some people Really, they commit suicide because of not having a child. May it God not be our portion. We don't, how can you do that? Don't kill yourself. Don't take your life because you cannot produce a life through you. You not being able to bring a life to this world does not mean that you are a failure. Does not mean you cannot take care of a child or you cannot uh, bring, you, even if it does not come from your body. You can actually go out there, adopt a child, have that child as your own. I've, I've heard and I've seen people who adopted a child, they are doing fine. You won't even know that they are not the, the, the parents of the, uh, those children. And they are living fine. Those children will love them just like the way their own children. Sometimes you don't know. How are you sure if you have your own children, your children will treat you the way that your adopted child will, will treat you. Sometimes the one you adopt might even treat you better than if you really have your own child. You don't know how God does his own thing. God might has a reason for doing all this, for not allowing you to conceive. I know God cannot deny us of our inheritance because he said children are inheritance of the Lord. The fruit of the womb is, is what? Is our reward. We are not supposed to bear God to give us a child. No. He has already put that womb there for us to conceive. It's just a um, natural thing that happens to us. The natural um, uh, problem, I don't know how to put it. It's the, the problem that, 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 that before us, it's the predicament that before us, that, that caused all these kind of problems. So not being able to conceive does not mean you have been labeled infertile. You are not infertile as long as you see your period monthly. You are fertile. You are fertile, you are a woman. Just that circumstances made you not to conceive. Please, don't take your life. Don't get what up over not being able to have a child. Don't be thinking and go and be having a mental problem because of not being able to have a child. Take care of yourself, look good. Go out there, socialize with people. Please, I am begging women, men, who are going through infertility problem. Be strong and hope upon God. Please, if you know anyone 
who is going through this infertility problem please share my video with them they will they will enjoy it they will derive one or two lessons from it please i always advise people if you are going through infertility problem it's not the end of the world i know people are going to laugh at you let them laugh at you let them laugh at you their children are not going to take care of you when you are old so what is the need and you are your children if you if you are able to have children your children still are not going to take care of them when they are old so why bugging yourself over what they are saying to you over the names they are calling you infert infertility um sorry barry woman yes i know people call people barry let them call you a barry woman as long as you see your period tell them you see your period you are not barry your period is a sign your menstruation is a sign that you are a woman as long as you measure you 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 see your ovulation monthly honey you are not barren you are not infertile it's just that circumstances made you not to conceive my dear i'm gonna leave this video here so that it will take um it will be too long uh i will be still be doing more videos on this uh, um you know infertility i'm gonna talk about option infertility options what you are supposed to do why go through infertility the other option you can do uh, thank you so much for watching my video thank you for subscribing to my youtube channel please i am begging you please share my video share it share it don't think maybe oh this video what, what am i going to get am i going through infertility you might have a friend you might have a sister you might have a neighbor that want to hear this by the time you spread the news you see that another person will spread it the other one will spread it people will derive you know one or two lessons from it all right thank you guys i'll see you next time once again my name is kate alexi bye have a good evening i love you guys so much Mwah.